am doing an experiment that I've wanted to do for a while. Um, if you've watched my channel, you've seen I've done a bunch of different dragon skin pours. And usually at some point while I'm filming, I'll say something like, I wonder if it matters what order you pour the colors in. <laughs> so today I'm going to try that. Um, so I have four different molds. They're all different. This is a round one with um, like faceted sides. I have a geode, round mold, and a square mold. I have different molds because I also want to see if that affects the way the colors kind of um, come around the edges and make the circular pattern. Because when you pour the puddle in the center, it's round. But if it hits a straight edge, I'm curious what happens like as it goes into the corners or in these little different types of edges. So I wanna test that out. And then in this square one, this is only a two ounce mold and these are three ounces. So in this one, I'm only gonna do one layer of each color. I usually do two layers of each. I'm only gonna do one layer of each because I'm also curious to see if it makes a difference do you always have to do the two layers? So I have a lot of different um, things I'm gonna test out. <laughs> so um, this set I am doing in copper and turquoise colors. So I've got, um, let's go through what I'm using. I have the Mixol Copper. This is um, very, very metallic. It almost looks like a mica. It's got that kind of metallic shimmer to it. It's really cool. I'm using Liquitex acrylic ink in the color turquoise deep. This will be a transparent color. I'm using the Pearl X super copper. This is very metallic, very lightweight. I love this mica. And then the just resin in blue diamond. So this is also kind of a turquoise shimmer. So those are the colors. I've mixed up 12 ounces. I have four ounces of clear set aside. And then I've got two ounces in each of these little cups. So let's get to mixing the colors here. Let's start with this one. These mix solids, you have to shake them up pretty good. Um, so I want this to be opaque. I'm gonna start with 10 drops. Whoops, that was a squirt. So I'll say that was like three drops. Four, five, oh. This is kinda not really coming out in drops, so. I guess we'll just go with that. We'll see what happens there. These mix all metallics are so, so cool. I love them. And the two coppers are different tones. This one's more of like an orangey copper. And then the mica is more of like a reddish copper. Add a bit more. I don't know if this will get to be fully opaque. I've only used these, um, this copper a couple times. And I don't remember if it's one that always has transparent or not. So there you can see the copper. It's just, I don't know how well you can see in the cup, but it's just a beautiful metallic, almost looks like molten copper. All right, I'm gonna do the mica next, just to give it some time to sit while I mix up the other ones. I'm just gonna do one good size scoop. I'm 
you mix mica, you always want to make sure that you mix it very, very well. Otherwise you end up with little chunks of powder and they'll sink down to the bottom of your mold. And in this case, the bottom of my mold is going to be the top of the coaster. So I definitely don't want chunks of powder on the top of the coaster. <laughs> Not a good look. This is such a rich, deep color. This is so pretty. How pretty that is. Copper is my favorite metal. I have a chunk of copper, actual solid copper. I weighed it one time and it's almost 18 ounces. I found it in the backyard when I was a little kid, way out in the back 40, just playing. And I found this blue rock and uh, I didn't know what it was, but it was really, really heavy for the size. It's not very big, but it was so heavy. And I've kept it all these years. And then it's maybe in my 20s or so, I showed it to somebody and they said, that's copper. And they ch you know, chipped off a little piece of it. And I don't know if it's solid copper. You know, I haven't had a, any expert look at it, but it appears to be just a solid chunk of copper, which is so weird where I found it is not really known for copper. <laughs> um, I'm going to do five drops to start of this turquoise deep. So I want this to be a dark color, but it is going to remain transparent. I like using acrylic ink instead of alcohol ink sometimes because alcohol ink is very lightweight so it tends to float and it's not color fast so if you're using it in pieces that are going to be exposed to uv rays your colors are going to fade so acrylic ink is a nice alternative it doesn't work if you're trying to do like a petri effect or certain things where you want the ink to float and kind of have, you know how alcohol ink just reacts to resin? Acrylic ink doesn't do that. So if you're trying to get that reaction, you won't get it from acrylic ink, but I really recommend it for other things, especially if you're just looking for a nice transparent color. So that's the turquoise deep. All right, then this, it's a shimmer. And what I've kind of discovered with the shimmer pigment pastes is you need quite a bit to get a um, opaque color. And I want opaque here. You need more than if this were just like a regular cream color. I'll take a good size scoop out of here. See how that does. This has the most beautiful sheen to it and almost like a black undertone. Gorgeous. All right, so that is opaque. That's just what I wanted. So, all right, colors are mixed up, so we're ready to pour. Oops, let me get that out of the way. Grab a little wet wipe. I always get resin all over myself. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start with the clear. Make sure you guys can still see. Okay, cool. 
All right, so I'm just gonna put about one ounce of clear in each of these. Trying to do it centered. All right, so now I am just going to start with the one that's in front of it. So I'm gonna do these all in a different order. So this one is gonna get the um, mix all first. This one's gonna get the mica. This one gets the ink. And this one gets the paste. Okay, so now I'm gonna alternate uh, copper, turquoise, copper, turquoise. So this one, I'll do, I think I'll do this one next because this is a little heavier. Do you and this one. Okay, then I'm gonna do this copper over here because this had the other copper. And then this copper. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to come back and watch the video to remember what I did where. It's a good thing about recording it all though. Very interesting to see how they're blending differently already. Okay, so this one's done. This one's just gonna get the clear now. Okay, um, I have to try to remember what order I did these in. All right, so you had this one. I'm just gonna do them in the same order. I know I, a lot of times I know I do them in a different order, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna do them in the same order. Otherwise, this is gonna get way too confusing for me to remember. <laughs> All right, so this one's done, so that, um, don't need to use that. Okay, so next you had this. Um, copper, then this. 
this one. This one. All right, you had this next. This one next. Glad I can still see the rings. <laughs> There's no way I would be able to remember this. Okay, and then last round. I'm just gonna use up whatever is left in these. All right, so then I've got the copper left over that would have gone in this one. To use that for something. And now the clear. So I don't normally put anything in the center on these, but this one, you can definitely see through it. So I'm actually gonna grab some glass and just drop it in there. And some copper glass, I think that'll look Pretty good. I think I'm gonna put some in the middle of this one too because it's a little bit transparent. I normally don't do that. But hey, this is a video about experimenting, so we're gonna try some different things today. I'm just gonna use my toothpick and push that glass down in there. Just wanna make sure it's totally submerged. So I'm going to let these cure and I will be back tomorrow to demold and I cannot wait. Oh, I always forget. Let me bring you down for a close up. So you can see there's some nice crackling effects going on in there. Ooh, that looks so cool. It looks like the moon. It almost looks like an orange rind on the sides there. <laughs> this one, you can't really see a lot of the turquoise in this one. Mostly the copper on this side. So I wonder if this one's going to have more turquoise on the other side. Very neat with the square. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow to get these out of the molds. Okay, everything is nice and cured, and I'm just dying to get these demolded. Let's give you a closer look. So each one's different. You can see a little bit of silver splattering on some of these. 
I was working on another project next to these and, and my silver uh, kind of splashed. <laughs> so they've all got a little bit of a silver extra decoration on the bottom side here. So <laughs> that's, that's what happens when I do too many projects at once. But so they all look very, very different. And I, I guess I'm expecting the front sides to look very different as well. You know, this is a test to see if the pouring order mattered. So let's take a look. All right, so this is the one that the first color that went down was the uh, Let's Resin Teal um, Pigment Paste. Well, that's really cool. So you can see the copper fell through the teal. It's, this one's pretty transparent, but it is very thin. This is a very thin mold. And this only had one layer. So I wonder if that's why it's so transparent, but it looks really neat. It still created that circular effect even though it was in a square mold. So the corners, they've all got a little bit of color in them, but no crackle effects or anything. All right, so let's move on to this one. I don't remember which one I poured first. I think this is the one where I poured the Mix-All first, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to watch the video back. You guys probably know because you just you're watching the video. <laughs> A little peacock feather right there. Edges look really cool. Lots of detail on the edges. Oh, there's where that feather is. It's like a little blue spot. All right. Okay, so we definitely have the copper, the blue, or the, the turquoise is much more subtle. Oh, I also came through and added some glass to this one after I shut off the video last night, because <laughs> I realized this one was pretty transparent in the center also. So I put some of this turquoise glass in there just to kind of contrast, because I thought this front side would be more copper and I was right so so that one this one is very solid on the back looks like it filled in pretty much all the way so the edges on this one don't seem to have a whole lot going on compared to the other one. And, okay, so this one doesn't have hardly any crackling at all. And I think, I don't remember if I poured the mix all first. Or the um, acrylic ink. I have to go back and watch. It's a shame, isn't it? I can't remember what I did less than 24 hours ago. <laughs> but this one does not have much crackling going on at all. There's kind of a cool effect around the edge in some spots. Not so much over here. But then it starts, starts up there. Barely translucent, but the center is pretty. It's got that nice teal center. All right, last one. So these edges have a little bit of interesting things going on. Some crackling showing through. And, okay. 
So that one also, it's not as extreme of a crackle, but it's got a crackle effect to it. So that's also interesting. So these are the two. This one has the most crackling, but it's only around, you know, it's more prominent around the sides. This one also, it's more around the sides. This one really gave a good crackle. This is what I would expect to see in my normal pours. But again, this was only one layer. So that could be why it's so transparent. But very, very interesting. So as always, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you thought this video was helpful, be sure you click the subscribe button and the little bell to get notifications for when I upload new content. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.